There we go. There, first one of the day here. <clears throat> nice little keeper on the Mega Bass Z2 crank. My becoming rapidly becoming my favorite crank. He's basically fishing a real shallow point here. Uh, that fish came probably. I'm gonna guess in two foot of water. And anytime you have a drawdown like this, like you're having at Grand Lake, you can see the gravel banks here. These fish will move into that shallow water, that foot or two of water, getting there, chasing these thread fin shad, just an excellent uh, mid fall area. And that's uh, one pound, seven ounce. There he is. Spinner bait. Oh, it's a good fish. Good fish. Yeah. Woo! There we go. Nice chunk. That is on the new Mega Bass SD3 spinner bait. Nice chunky fish. Mega Bass SD3 spinner bait. Nice chunk here. Three pounds and ten ounces. Nice chunky fish, Mega Bass FD3 spinner bait. Now that fish there, like I said, here we are, mid part of September. Um, I always stress in a lot of the stuff I teach about isolated objects. And I'm gonna roll you around here and let you see here. This is an isolated complex uh, blowdown tree that probably was washed in through here by a flood. Water depth's probably four foot deep, and that fish was suspended about two foot deep on some of these bigger logs. So I'll roll you around here. Okay, as you can see here, we got this complex laydown tree. You got a root section on one end. You got the limbs coming out. Um, four foot of water. Slow roll that spinner bait down the limbs. And I always look for isolated objects like this. This, pl this place is out of the way. You gotta come a long way to get to it, but it's well worth it when you find them. If we can get another one here. Now, another thing I wanna stress here is when you get around a piece of cover like this, you need to make sure you hit it from a lot of different angles. I mean, there's no doubt that there's more bass on this particular tree. So I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come across it at a lot of different angles you know, to try to sort of just maximize the potential of this particular spot here. Hey guys, this is Johnny. Randy just talked about the importance of making multiple presentations to an isolated piece of cover in the fall. For some of you guys, that might mean making five to seven casts on a really good looking laydown or tree. However, Randy makes a lot more casts than that with a variety of baits, especially if he catches a fish off a particular log or laydown. So after Randy caught that three and a half pounder off this tree, he proceeded to make about 30 to 35 more casts on this exact laydown, circling it multiple times. And he was pitching to it with a jig, he threw a creature bait on it, he was throwing a small crankbait, as well as that spinner bait. He also made sure to hit that log from multiple angles and cast down parallel to the branches of the tree, over the tops of the branches, and in the hard to reach areas. This was a technique that was dominant during the 80s and 90s in professional bass fishing tournaments because a lot of tournaments took place in the fall. And guys like Rick Clun and Randy were able to dominate by fishing these isolated pieces of cover and making a ton of casts on these spots. Most guys will see this, they might make five to seven presentations and move on. But Randy, he'll go around this exact same log, especially after he catches a fish, three or four times, casting with multiple baits from multiple angles and it can produce a lot of good fish. Now in this situation, Randy didn't catch any more fish off this spot, but there are times when you might be able to catch five to seven bass, maybe even 10 bass off of one isolated laydown like this, especially if there's shad pushed up in there and you get the right day. So the key with fishing isolated cover in the fall is to not rush, hit the spot for multiple angles with multiple baits. And if you do that, you're gonna put a lot more fish in the boat. Really quick, we want to let you guys know about the new and improved lake breakdowns we're offering on our website, fishthemoment.com. Just head to the lake breakdowns page on our website, and 
Here you'll find lake breakdowns that offer 40 GPS waypoints that you can download straight onto your fish finder. We include detailed area descriptions, keys to fishing the lake, and a summary of the lake, as well as a detailed guide on how to download the waypoints from your computer to your fish finder and view them on Google Earth. All these waypoints are picked out by Randy, who has 30 years of professional experience in all these lakes. We offer lakes by season, so we have September through November breakdowns for lakes all across the country, as well as winter breakdowns for December through January, and we're adding lakes to this list every single week. Now, if you don't see your lake available on these breakdowns yet, we will be offering some personalized lake breakdowns when Randy finishes up the Bassmaster Opens in mid-December. You can also always sign up for a virtual fishing lesson with Randy and myself, and we can walk through your lake with you looking at Google Earth, Navionics, and talking about strategy. So if you're interested, head over to the website and check out our new and improved Fish the Moment lake breakdowns. There he is. Oh, man. God, that was a good one. Jeez. Ah. Come off. Ah. Man, nice fish. Threw it there by that lay down, same like I caught that last big one. Got it, another bit, another three or four pounder, and just come off. Jeez. There he is. Finally. Finally got one to get a jerk bait on the end of this seawall here. This is sort of what I'm expecting here. It's pretty good. Oh man. Ah God. good fish. Like a three pounder. Ah oh, man. He had like the back hook in his mouth. I saw him, he had the whole bait out of the mouth. So it's like, ah, oh, that was a nice one. That was like a three pounder. Jeez. Oh man, I, that's unusual like that. Right on the edge of the seawall, just suspended underneath there, probably two feet deep. Uh, God. Man, I thought I had him. Nice fish. There's, an, oh, there's another one with a little one though. Might be a keeper. Oh, it's, an, it's a keeper. Oh yeah, nice Kentucky, nice Kentucky. There we go. Jeez, can't believe that. I just lost the three pounder, threw back out there and caught this nice fat Kentucky. Mega Bass Vision 110, deadly black shad color. One of my favorite colors. But, geez. You know, I think what happened is right before I lost that good one there, um, I got hung up on a rope and I had to pull that bait real hard with a pair of pliers to get it out of there on the rope. And I think I straightened the hook out a little bit. So, we'll see what we got here. Man, that's three really nice fish I've lost today. So, uh, two pounds and three ounces. So anyway, nice little Kentucky there. You know, lost the three pounder, but at least I got the Kentucky. Two, three, so that's uh, five, five, two, three. That's seven, eight for three. There might be another one in there. A lot of times on the end of these sea walls like this, those fish will school up sometimes on them. And you know, you can catch five or six on an area. They've been getting that one there. Man. Here's a better look at the break wall that Randy's fishing. It's in the mouth of two pockets and it's off the tip of a main lake point. This break wall is used to protect the marina from boat wakes, and the actual break wall is sitting over the top of 30 to 35 feet of water. However, the fish are suspended just below that break wall at maybe two to three feet of water using the shade to ambush shad. This is a great place for bait fish and bass to stage in the late summer and early fall. 
The shad can feed on the floats underneath these break walls, and the bass can use the shade from that break wall to ambush those shad. The fish won't use these for very long because the shad will eventually move all the way into the back of these pockets. But while they're there, you can find groups of fish just like Randy did. And if you can pull up on the right break wall at the right time, you can catch multiple fish on baits like a jerk bait and a swim bait. And that's it for Randy's day on Grand Lake. This is actually part of a three video series where Randy and I competed in a shallow versus offshore challenge. We made a recap video explaining which pattern was better offshore fishing or shallow fishing, and I also published my fishing day where I caught some really good fish offshore on the exact same day that Randy's fishing up shallow. If you want to see the comparison of our two days as well as follow my day on the lake to see how I approach the lake differently than Randy, check out these videos that I'll link right here, and subscribe to the Fish the Moment YouTube channel if you want to see more of these shallow versus offshore challenges. So thanks again for checking out the video, and we'll see you all next one. Thank you.